Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful day here in Grayson, Georgia. Uh, so great to see everyone this morning, and I uh, hope you are having a fantastic day. Again, it's a beautiful day here in Grayson, Georgia, and I just wanted to reach out and connect with my Facebook friends today. This morning, I was just thinking about so many friends I've got across the globe uh, here on Facebook, and some of you I've known all the way back to our days at Dyer Elementary. Uh, in the mid 70s and then uh, some of you got to know through middle school high school at Central Gwinnett and uh, Berry College go Vikings uh, where uh, my precious wife Jane and I graduated in 1991 and you know um, others of you have connected with me through uh, gotbaseballcards.com through our sports card business um, you might have seen me uh, on other social media platforms um, you may have heard me speak or sing uh, somewhere, or um, you may have seen me in a, the new eBay commercial. Uh, but however you've connected with me, I was thinking how all of us have something in common. No matter where we're located, you might be watching this across the globe. Um, we all have something in common. We all need hope. In this world we're living in today, we all need hope. And so um, my desire today, I'm gonna share a little bit of my story with you because a lot of you know my face, uh, but a lot of you may not really know my story. And so, uh, I haven't updated a lot of my Facebook friends what's going on in my life lately either. So I um, want to do that today and hopefully share a little bit of hope with you. Uh, and I'm going to take it all the way back to 1968 when uh, God blessed me to come into this world. I was born into a loving family of five. I was the youngest of, I am the youngest of three brothers. My older brothers, Jeff and Larry, are 11 years and eight years older than me. So as I like to tell people, I am the original bonus baby. And so, uh, born in 1968 and uh, um, went to, as I shared, uh, Dyer Elementary in Lawrenceville. And I absolutely hated school, hated school so much that I would sit down in the hall and cry and uh, plead with my mom not to make me go to school. I uh, just did not like school at all. And uh, so, at the end of that year, uh, my parents and the school decided they would give me the opportunity at a second chance. And so I had a second chance to go back to first grade. And with that second chance, I began to love school and loved it throughout. And, and uh, I thank God to this day for second chances. And so uh, love school um, in 1987, started dating my future bride Jane Thompson when we were seniors in high school and we went off to Berry College together and graduated in 1991 and that year I opened my business my first uh, sports card business and uh, at a little tiny 500 foot store in Avondale Estates and we've been blessed to grow that business over the years since then and I'll share more about that later but um, Jane and I have been married uh, 29 years now I'm so blessed so very blessed with her as my bride and in 1993 our son Josh was born and in 1997 Allison came into our lives and we have been so blessed with our precious children and uh, they have now uh, moved on and have their own careers Josh is a consultant for Deloitte uh, out in the Bay Area and uh, Allison is a school teacher a music teacher uh, here in Gwinnett and so so proud of both of them and the lives they lead and the way they impact others and we're so blessed to have a precious daughter-in-law Melissa who is now working on her MBA at Stanford and so uh, so blessed with all of our children and uh, you know we just um, there's so many things I could I could spend this whole video telling you about them and all the ways God has blessed us with them but I want to talk to you uh, more about your story. Um, part of my story, I've shared you a little bit about my family and uh, I do my career. I'm in the sports card industry uh, and uh, sell sports cards online and through our retail store. Uh, I've been blessed to do that since 1991 and, and Jane is a wonderful assistant principal here in Gwinnett County and so uh, I'm so proud of her and the way she impacts students and teachers every day in her career um, but you know as I was sharing with you earlier uh, one thing we all have in common no matter how you connected to me on Facebook is we all need hope 
uh, we're living in a world where hope is often not found. And so I wanted to share with you today what my source of hope is. You know, having a great family, having a beautiful home, having great careers, all those things are wonderful, but they can all be fleeting. And we all need some permanency in our lives. And we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised our career tomorrow. Uh, we're not promised. Uh, there's so many things in this life that are no, there, there are no guarantees with. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is something that uh, is guaranteed for eternity. And my hope I first discovered when I was only five and a half years old. I still remember the night. I still remember it clearly like it was yesterday. I remember uh, laying in my bed, and though it was not an audible voice, it certainly sounded like it to me in my head. I felt like God was, the, God, the creator of this universe, was reaching out to me and uh, was telling me that he wanted a relationship with me. You see, the God who created the universe, created everything we see, uh, loves you. He has a plan for you. And from the beginning of time when he created this earth, created the universe, created mankind, he has been seeking a relationship with each one of us. And so, because he wants his children to love him back in return the way he loves us. And so that night, for the first time, I came to realize uh, I'd already believed there was a God. I believe there was a God who created everything, but I came to understand his love for me like never before. I came to understand that God had loved me so much that he had sent his son Jesus to this earth. And Christ, Jesus Christ, came to this earth lived a sinless spotless life for 33 years and then he died on a cross not for his sin but for mine and so because he did that for me it allows me to have a relationship with him now because that night when i was 47 years ago 47 years ago i prayed to god and i said lord please forgive me of my sin please forgive me of the things i've done wrong you know, I was not exactly a front page villain at that point at five and a half years old, but I certainly knew that I had done things. I had disobeyed my parents. I had done things that God didn't want me to do. And I have certainly failed him in plenty of ways since then. You know, as I tell people, Christians are certainly not perfect. We're just forgiven. And so I, and that's not a license to do things wrong. It's just a matter of fact that when we ask Christ into our lives as I did that night, he forgave me of my sins but more than that he not only forgave me he came into my life to live in me and abide in me and and the reason I use that word is uh, this week we were studying in my life group class uh, John uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2 where and uh, we studied where Jesus called his very first disciples and the word he used depending on what translation you're reading he'll say follow me and the original it's saying that to, to not just follow him but to abide with him and it wasn't just about a physical sense of direction but it was about coming and knowing him and learning from him and growing in him and it's the very same thing that Jesus asked us to do today and understand today that when I talk to you it's not about a religion I'm not on here saying hey you need to join this denomination or you need to do this or you need to uh, practice this I'm simply telling you what happened to me I'm telling you that my source of hope is found in Jesus Christ my source of direction comes from my relationship with him and this precious book the number one bestseller of all time I was just reading today how this book God's Holy Word the Holy Bible has sold about four billion copies over the last 50 years. Put that in perspective with any other book. There's no comparison. It's in a category all by itself. The reason this is the best-selling book of all time is because it is the most beautiful love letter ever written. It's a love letter to you to communicate God's love to you. And it tells of God's story and you know, um, as I was studying with my life group class this week in, in John chapter 1 and 2, we also talked about the wedding at Cana, which if you're familiar with that, it was the very first recorded miracle of Jesus. And what he did at that wedding was he turned water into wine. And so I've been asked, and, and people 
uh, will, will often ask, why was that his first miracle? What did that say? What was that trying to demonstrate? And to me, my opinion is it's very simple. You see, Christ did a transforming act, his very first miracle. In that instance, he transformed water into wine, yet he demonstrated to the world for generations past and forward that he had come to transform lives. And that's what he did in my life. Remember I told you how I, I hated school, how I absolutely didn't want to go to school. I would cry every day to school. You know, after I became a Christian at that very young age, my life changed. My life changed. I became a straight-A student the very next year and remained so through school. And so uh, that was just one way that God blessed me in my walk with him and directed my life. And, you know, when I... Uh, when I started dating, I knew the type of person I wanted to marry because of what God teaches me in his word. When I became a parent to Josh and to Allison, Jane and I trusted this book to show us and direct us on how to be good parents and how to show love to them. You know, when I was a kid, I used to play a game with my kids and, and I, would, I would say to them, uh, you know how much daddy loves you? And I'd stretch my arms out and I'd say, Daddy loves you this much. You know, well, over 2,000 years ago, Christ did the very same thing for us. But he stretched out his arms on a cross. He stretched out his arms to show the world how much he loves them. You know, there's a lot of talk today and there's a lot of protests and there's a lot of things that go on in our society where, where one group or another talks about uh, why their lives matter and why this group matters and so forth. And the thing is, over 2,000 years ago, Christ demonstrated that all lives matter to him. You see, it doesn't matter today, your race, creed, color, sex, religion, it does, your age, your economic status, what country you live in, what political party you belong to, or if you don't belong to any, Christ loves you and your life matters to him. And today, God just laid it on my heart to share with you that if you're looking for hope, if you need hope in your life, it is found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's not about a denomination. It's not about a set of rules. It's about a relationship. Yes, I try to live by this word. I get it wrong really often. But I try to live by this word, by what God teaches me. And I'm still, after 47 years, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. But the thing is, uh, I will, uh, I'll never be a perfect person on this earth. Christ is the only one who got it right. But he demonstrated his love for us. In God's word in Romans 5, 8, there was an author, his name is Paul. He wrote more of the New Testament than any other author. He got the Holy Spirit spoke through him to write much of the New Testament and in Romans 5 8 he wrote to the church he said God demonstrates his love towards us that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us you see a lot of people have it confused that I've had people say well I've just got to get some things right in my life first you know, I'm going to take care of some things. I'm going to stop doing this and stop doing that. And then I'll be ready to give my life to the Lord. And, and that's not how it works. We come to him, like the old song says, just as we are. Just as we are. You know, God's word says there is no one righteous. No, not one. Billy Graham, great evangelist, world famous evangelist, traveled the world preaching and teaching, demonstrating God's love to others. You know what? He was a sinner, as he, as he stated often. Because God's word says there's no one righteous. No, not one. Not one of us. Not one of us is going to get to heaven based on our works. You know, God's word even says that, that uh, the greatest works, our greatest works are like filthy rags. The greatest things we could do in and of ourselves. So today, I just wanted to share with you, I've got so many friends out there. And I can't call you all up on the phone today, but I can tell you that God loves you and he's got a plan for you and he wants a relationship with you. 
you know, as a child, like I said, all I did, I asked Christ to forgive me. I asked God to forgive me of my sins. I asked Christ to come into my life to change me, to be my Savior first, because he had to save me from my sins, but to be my Lord, that he would lead my life each and every day. And so I can tell you this, 47 years later, it was the greatest, wisest, smartest decision I ever made. Nothing compares to that decision. Nothing. I've made a lot of really good decisions in my life, made some really bad ones too, but I can tell you the greatest, wisest, smartest decision I ever made was when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And He is my source of hope. He is my source of strength. And so today, if you're hurting whatever's going on in your life, if you need somebody to talk to, if you're confused about what it means to have a relationship with Christ, please message me. I would be so honored to talk to you about that. There's no pressure. It's just two people talking. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to message with you, whatever. Um, but just know that there's a God who loves you. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you. His son had lived a sinless, perfect life and gave his life for you out of his love for you. And he wants that relationship with you today. He wants it out of his love for you. No one has ever loved me like he has. And no one will ever love me the way he has. I have a wonderful, loving wife, a wonderful, loving family, but no one has ever loved me like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so if I could beg you and plead with you today to help you see what a vitally important decision this is, I would love to sit with you and talk to you in person. But this is the best way I can reach out to so many of you at once. So I want to thank all of you for, for watching today. I hope you'll share this with your friends. And again, please don't hesitate to message or call me. I would love to talk to you about what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ because I can't tell you anything about my story without talking about him because he is the one who changed me. He's the one who shaped my life, molded me, changed me, and loved me from the moment I was born. So I hope everybody out there has a fantastic day and I hope to see you again real soon. So again, thanks for tuning in. God bless you all.